Give me 30 minutes, that's all I need, and then we'll go to lunch. Sometimes you need to make deals like that, especially when are we going to go to lunch. So let's get started. Starting a painting is actually my favorite part, so full of promise. The timer in this case is to keep me from going too long. I don't think I'd forget to eat, but I might. My goal here was to get the basic feel of the place with an interesting composition and some decent color notes. There's so much scenery to take in that it can get overwhelming to try to do it all. When you're painting outside with pencils, you don't have time for details. So I resist the urge to do details and I just get bold and even a little sloppy. It feels crazy to do it, but it's one of my top tips for painting on location. Get those big shapes in and get the composition right. Get the perspective and sight lines right, but worry about the other detailed stuff later. The local green color of those trees is a good complement to the reddish violet underpainting of those cool rock cliffs and spires. Those spires will be orange eventually, and I think the relationship between green, orange, and violet makes a triad on the color wheel. I can't say I'm great at color theory, but paying attention to how the colors can work together is also a fun part of painting. This messy underpainting approach only works if you're using the right surface though. Even though I'm using water soluble pencils, I like to use pastel surfaces that are rough. And for this painting, I'm using a textured pastel board. The rough surface allows me to do lots of layers and I'll be using non-water soluble pencils at a later stage for the detail work, which will layer just fine due to the toothy sandy surface this board has. As I put the dry colored pencil over the top of the underpainting, I'll let some of the color I'm underneath peek through. I think that makes for a, a nice interesting depth to the painting. Now that I'm home and I have a reference photo to look at, I decided I need to give myself just 30 more minutes to finish this up. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that you can see that a lot of this is just drawing practice. In fact, I'm using Derwent drawing pencils to do this. They're nice and smooth and creamy, and they layer really well on top of this underpainting. And as I said before, I like allowing some of the underpainting to peek through, but these pencils are so opaque that it is covering up quite a bit. So notice that that clock stopped ticking. It's because at some point I paused it for doing who knows what, and then I started again, and I lost track of time. I like that about drawing and doing this hobby. It's very easy to get lost in what you're doing, and even though it was difficult for me to get started again at home, once I started, I couldn't stop. This tree on the right had a lot of character, and so did the trip, actually. We went to a lot of places in Colorado I'd never been to. We visited the Grand Mesa, and that was really cool. We camped overnight, and I had hoped to paint a little bit by this lake, but never really got around to it. And I took plenty of photos and video that I could refer to at home. And that timer hack worked. It got me started. So how does this make you better at art? Well, there's lots of things that go into learning to draw and paint. But I'm convinced the most important step is to get started. Even if you only have a few minutes. Well, I need to clean up. I think I'll set a timer for 10 minutes for that. Thanks for exploring art with me. I hope these videos inspire you to explore on your own.